Hello, hello, my friends. Thank you for joining me here today. I'm Dorothy, professional astrologer. You can find me right here, nhastrologer.com. Today, I'm going to talk about the week of June 29th and the energies and how I see what the planets are doing this week. So this week, we have Jupiter and Pluto making their second conjunction. The first one was April 4th. I'm going to talk about that and what that means, especially as they are retrograde right now. Saturn retrogrades back into Capricorn. I'll give you a little conversation about that. Well, we'll talk about that. And then I will also end with the eclipse that we have on the weekend. It's the third eclipse because this whole week, the moon is waxing towards this full moon and an eclipse. It's a partial eclipse, but still it is uh, very important for us to pay attention to these things. So I'm going to talk about all of that and how we can use it. So let's get started making sure i'm recording yes i am let's get started so starting on the 29th the first thing on the 20th the big news of course is like i just mentioned jupiter and pluto are coming together for their second conjunction this is they came together on april 4th was the first time as planets that were direct same degree actually at 24 degrees of capricorn so you can find that in your chart and just see what powerful changes are happening for you right? These are, this is powerhouse connections. They haven't been together in Capricorn for hundreds and hundreds of years, and they're doing it three times this year. And so we have big opportunities for changes. Now, of course, we could see those changes. April 4th was the Stargate day. If you go back to that, check out what you were doing then. I think we're all in lockdown or or quarantine or whatever you want to call it at that point in time. Yeah, that happened in the middle of March. So yeah, um, April felt like a blur. I don't even remember it, even though I was here. <laughs> I barely remember it. I barely remember June, and it's almost July already. The year, the time is weird, right? It's like long and then it's short. It's bizarre. That's Saturn in Aquarius. But anyways, April 4th was a day where we have these opportunities because it was a four and a four and a four with the with the numerology of it, an opportunity to really open up to something new. We were just beginning to see what was going on with the pandemic. We hadn't peaked yet. Um, we weren't sure what was going on and we can just see all the upheaval that's been go that has been happening since the last time they were conjunct. The fabric of our society has really been stretched and strained. There's a lot of awareness now around the power struggles that are going on in our governments and among groups of people and the fears that are being raised with this type of transaction, transit actually. So the breaking down of systems, all of these things are emerging for us to see what's going on so we can see what the truth really is. You know, and that's gonna be revealed more and more as the year goes on. But right now, that's the collective experience and the individuals experiencing these things too, but not everybody. Because if you know me, I, always, I want to, you know, I don't have my head in the sand. I see that there is a lot of upheaval and a lot of power struggles and fears have come to the surface, you know, and, and this is to give us an opportunity. I know it feels really weird to say that in a pandemic, but this is an opportunity for us to look at what is very secure for each and every one of us. Now we rely on our governments and the powers that be that's power Pluto, right? To support us in our times of need. But I want you to, if you know me, like I just started to say it just a little bit, I want to get to what more positive ways that we can use this Jupiter and Pluto conjunction. So what can we do? I mean, there are very positive ways to do this. While both of them are retrograde, it's a little more of an internal drive to gain back your power and your control in the places that you feel you've lost it. And in the places that all of the upheaval that's been going on in the last few months has shown you where you need to step up. What isn't working and what is working? What do you want to do? How are you going to find your truth, your authenticity, right? That's what Jupiter wants from us. Where are you in that department? Like what is your authentic truth? And I know, I don't want that to sound too woo-woo, but in a way it is. It's just sit back. You know how many people I talk to these days and they just say, I don't like my job. I don't want to go back to it, but what can I do? And it's just like, this is those questions we're asking ourselves now. It's going to be a little bit different for everybody. 
Some people are, are brave and that Mars in Aries now in there for the next seven months, right? That Mars in Aries gives us this opportunity to take that courage and step up. Eventually Mars is going to square this Capricorn stuff. And I'll talk about that in the weekly, the weekly forecast as we get to it. But in the meantime, what's coming to the surface for you so you can take this positive way of using this Jupiter and Pluto conjunction and step up into um, what moves you and what makes you feel like you want to do something for yourself. So when things get wonky again, because they are kind of in a peak. And I know this Jupiter sat, this Jupiter Pluto conjunction right now is also, I've mentioned it weeks ago, how this is when the pandemic is going to explode again. And it is in a lot of areas. So take your time and see me if you need some help with that. That's what, that's what my job is. But take your time to find your own truth and to take back your own power, to really enter that space of, I know I feel secure. All right. So that's what we can do. Did I share the chart yet? I didn't share the chart yet, did I? So I just want you to see what that chart looks like. I know not everybody cares about what the charts look like, but for the astrologers out there and the, the baby astrologers, I call you guys, <laughs> the, new, the new ones, you newbies, this is just for my location, my latitude, longitude, and the time of day that Jupiter and Pluto are conjunct. It just happens to be in New England here on the midheaven and Uranus is on the ascendant. So I suspect that there'll be something unexpected happening at that point in time, somewhere on, well, I'm recording this on Monday, so today, tonight. Even the moon is opposite Uranus at this point in time, which is again, Tuesday night in the middle of the morning, actually 1 45, 46 AM on Tuesday here in New England. So we're, full, we're right now we're having lots and lots of thunderstorms. We have a couple of days of thunderstorms. So maybe that will be it. All right. I'm going to stop the share. All right. So what do I have for you next is Capricorn. Saturn. <laughs> Saturn retrogrades back into the sign of Capricorn. Yes. What day? Let me grab my notes. Yes, it's on July 1st. Wednesday, July 1st, Canada Day to my friends up north. July 1st, Saturn retrogrades back into Capricorn at 7.37 p.m. Eastern Time, 4.37 Pacific Time. And you have to adjust if you're not in the United States so or North America. So anyways, what do we do with this? So as a retrograde planet, you know, he's, he's heading back from Aquarius. He's only in there for a little while. Saturn's going to stay in the sign of Capricorn one, one last time until December 16th. So what does this mean? So this means that Cap, Saturn and Capricorn, as a retrograde planet, it's time to clean up it's time to look at the things that are Capricorn related. Now, this is, I'm going to tell you what they are. This is also going to be true. You can take notes right here about the eclipse because the eclipse coming up on the weekend is also in Capricorn. So here's some things. So here's questions. We need to slowly, since it's retrograde, we're now going to start to see, all right, things have crumbled. Has things, have things stopped crumbling? Maybe not all the way yet, but with Saturn retrograding back into this sign, we have this opportunity to start digging through the rubble of whatever that means to you, whatever's fallen apart, digging through the rubble to find out what we can rebuild on. All right. I know that sounds crazy, but Capricorn represents what our structure and our foundation is. The foundation will remain. What are we going to use that has fallen and crumbled down? What are we going to use to rebuild? Only the good stuff only the good stuff, right? There's some things that we can, we can pull out of the rubble of what's been going on over these number, number of months. And we have all the way through December 16th while he remains in that sign. So when does he turn around? See, I sometimes I don't have all of these dates stuck in my head yet. Um, his retrograde ends uh, the very end of September. So between July 1st, and the very end of September, he is retrograding Capricorn. So those are going to give us great opportunities to work with the energy of rebuilding from the bottom up. Some of sample questions you would want to come up with, is my career secure? Um, we sure figured that piece out when jobs started going away. 
do I need to step up and do something different than what I've been doing before? All right. We've had a lot of truth being revealed to us over these last six months, especially. And now is the time for you to step up, feel like you're in more control when it, in regards to your career and your security. And one of the biggest things we need to make sure we do is to make sure we're not making choices from fear. That Capricorn energy is full of fear if we allow that to happen. You know, we think of Capricorn as the boss and the people in charge and the strength of our foundations, but a lot of people make and create these, uh, make and create decisions based out of fear. And we don't want to do that. We want to make sure that we stay as solid in our own truth because Jupiter's in Capricorn and the changes that we've been making, Pluto in Capricorn, that's been in Capricorn since 2008, but these deep internal changes we've been making for a long time. And again, now that Saturn returns to his sign for the last stint, he won't be back. Once he leaves in December, he won't be back for another 28 years. So you have this opportunity, we all have this opportunity to create a new foundation. This is global, this is national, this is personal. So look at that Capricorn area of your chart. I've been talking about this forever in a day, but it's, it's, it's very active and it's really important for us to um, see what we can build off of in that regard, okay? All right, let's move on to the eclipse. All right, I'm going to share my screen for this one. Let's see if I can get the right chart up first. Oh, I never put up the chart for Saturn. That's okay. All right, do do do. Here we are. Share screen. Here we are. Very good. Here's the full moon, lunar eclipse. So again, like most of the things this year, it's split on two different days depending on your location your latitude, longitude. So on Saturday, July 4th at 9.44 p.m., if you are on the west coast of the United States, so Pacific time, and here in New England, it is at 12.44 a.m. on Sunday the 5th. So what are we going to do with this? So here's this eclipse. This is what a full moon eclipse looks like right here. So when we have eclipses, you know, it's a partial eclipse, so it's, it's, it's not like the total eclipses that we experience at times. But the partial eclipse is still an eclipse and it still means we have extra power. It is supercharged in a lot of ways. So we just this just means that this eclipse in Capricorn is just gonna ratchet things up a notch or two. Full moon, and especially an eclipse, is a reflection, all right? It reflects to us Capricorn things. So our insecurities. What I've already talked about, I mentioned a few minutes ago, take notes because we're going to hear the same thing when it comes to this eclipse. We're going to look at our insecurities. It shows us where we need things to change because we don't feel safe and secure. Our most recent history, of course, has shown us where we might have some weaknesses, right? Globally or personally. Look at it personally for you, where you might have some weaknesses. And the house that this eclipse is in is going to give you more information about that category. I know that's personal information. Um, so we have that opportunity to do that, right? And so with that eclipse, we have these opportunities with the full moon as well. We, are, we get to realize and what's reflected back to us are the things that we need to let go of. And it is also things that we need, we, we realize that we've been building for. Okay, this is like, here, let me, let me back up. I want you to go, this is this lunar family that this full moon eclipse is, is uh, connected to. Let me find my notes. Started on January 5th, 2019. We had a new moon at the same degree, right? And then nine months later, October 5th, 2019 was the first quarter. And now here we are on July 4th slash 5th, full moon lunar eclipse at 13 degrees Capricorn. So that 18 months ago, this is in the written forecast, if you want to see what I'm saying, um, 
what we do here. It's like in January 2019, when we began something, planted new things, new ideas. By the time we got to October, nine months later, we we're able to, the plants were growing, we we're able to see our plans, our thoughts, our gardens were growing we're able to see this plant's thriving fantastic by the time we get to the full moon which is july 4th and 5th we have this opportunity to pluck the things that aren't working to trim this plant back to trim your your plans your thoughts your ideas of these projects the things you've been working on for 18 months now is the time for you to say all right i love how this is working i'm going to continue to do this Capricorn. So it's based on, again, where you're strong, where you're secure, your career, how you are out in the world. And it's also the fears that haven't happened, the things that have crumbled. What, where do I not feel secure? So full moon eclipse will, will help us to see and recognize if you can take some quiet time and to see and recognize again, what that path is. What is the path I take? We're at this fork in the road at this point in time. So what path do I want to take for my life personally, not based off of fear? Venus, I'm going to talk about Venus real quick. Venus is now direct. She's a morning star. She's moving direct in Gemini. This, one of the meanings behind that is we need to make our choices around and based from a heart-centered place, not from a place of fear. Venus, that heart-centered, that goddess, that, that energy of reception in Gemini. Let's hear the messages. Let's quiet our, our minds so the heart can feel and hear those messages. Venus and Gemini as a direct planet now, as she's beginning a new cycle as a morning star planet. So the Capricorn, all those planets in Capricorn, the conjunction of Jupiter and Pluto, Saturn coming back into Capricorn this week, and these eclipse, this eclipse on the weekend in Capricorn. Mars and Aries, holy Toledo, we have opportunities here to really clear the road. It's just like an earth, when an earthquake happens and things crumble. Slowly the people start to dig out the rubble to see what remains so we can build back on it. We're digging out of the rubble right now. All of 2020 is going to be that. We will be able to identify some things as to those pivotal points of where we want to launch from there. That's what this whole week is all about. And honestly, that's what this whole year is about. So much powerful energy is going on. It's just unbelievable. Let me get that chart one more time. And so throughout the weekend, and into Monday, uh, July 6th, the moon is going to make its conjunctions to all of these planets. And, you know, and that's going to stir things up even more because it's an eclipse moon and it's just been like supercharged as it's moving through. It will connect with Jupiter, Pluto, and then Saturn. So Sunday night, excuse me, into Monday. So it's, it's just going to stir things up even more. So this is an important weekend to... Do the best you can to, you know, reel in your insecurities and fear and to, I'm talking about fishing, and to throw that line out into something new that you know you want to um, work on and accomplish. All right, I'm going to leave you with that. Let me stop my share just so I can see you up close. Thank you very much, everybody. And Patreon, I would love you to join that. It's just a way to support me in all of this free content. Please don't forget to like and comment and share with your groups. It's very helpful. And um, I will leave you with that. You know how to reach me in hastrologer.com for personal and private sessions. Blessings. Namaste.